Zero SR 10,000 mile review. Yeah. Been watching uh, regular car reviews lately. Anyway, let's get down to brass tacks. So what is there to say about the Zero SR after 10,000 miles that I haven't already said in a plethora of videos that I've already made? All right, number one. The level of maintenance I've advertised is true. I haven't had to do anything except replace both tires, one because of a puncture and one because of wear. That's it. Now, with that being said, I'd say there's a good chance the brakes may need replaced, but they still work great and there's no indication that they need to be replaced. It also probably wouldn't hurt to have the motor diagnosed. When I bought the bike, they said they could do some type of diagnostic on the motor and tune it, which will gain a couple percentages in efficiency. I've never done that and the guy said it's not something that has to be done, so I just haven't done it. Last thing about maintenance. If you buy a zero motorcycle and don't live within the bike's range of a dealer like I, like I do, I live like far away from a dealer, you should probably learn how to do all the basic maintenance yourself. I was lucky enough to have a motorcycle dealership in Jacksonville that could replace both tires for me even though this was the first zero they worked on. If something seriously serious goes wrong with the battery or computers on the bike, I'm going to have to get a truck or something and take the bike to Raleigh, North Carolina. Somehow, some way. It's about 120 miles from where I live, but that is highway driving, which means the bike wouldn't make it on one charge. Number two, there's been no indication of a change in performance, no battery degradation that I've noticed, and no issues, period. For being what some people would call a parts bin bike, the quality is held up and everything works and is in its place. Now, about battery degradation. It's funny because the trick with this bike isn't being able to charge it up. The issue is keeping it charged around 80% because there's no way to set the charge level. So if you keep the bike charged overnight, it will charge 100%. And anyone who knows anything about lithium ion batteries knows that the best way to maximize battery life is to keep them charged between 20 and 80%. So I plan and monitor my charging so that I go out and unplug it when I need to. If I forget, it just charges up to 100%, which isn't a problem. I just, like, I just like to keep my bike around 80% unless I'm going to take a long ride. Majority of my rides are 20 to 30 miles after work or to and from work, so I don't need 100% state of charge. I do believe the SRF and SRS allows you to do this through the app, but no other bikes in Zero's lineup do it as far as I know. Number three, and this is a big one. Let's talk about range. And this is a touchy subject. Doing a quick Google search, I found that the average miles that a motorcycle rider rides in, in a year is from 2,000 to 6,000 miles. Right now, I'm on track to average a bit over 5,000 miles a year since I bought the bike back in August of 2018. So range? What was the question again? I don't think it's a question of the range of the bike. I think it's more of a question of how often do you ride and how far do you ride per ride. The answer that, to that question for me is that I ride often, probably three to five times a week if the weather cooperates. Each ride I probably go eh, about 20 to 30 miles. Let's see if that adds up. If you take three times a week and 20 miles per ride, you get 3,120 miles in a year. Now take five times a week and 30 miles per ride, you get 7,800 miles per year. Average those two numbers and you get 5,400 460 miles, which is accurate to the amount I've rode in almost two years. I've also taken many 80 plus mile rides on weekends, so it kind of all averages out. Again, the question isn't range, it's how often do you ride and how far do you go per ride. If you ride twice per week on the weekend, but on those rides you go 400 miles, then an electric bike isn't for you in most circumstances. If you ride multiple times per week, but go 80 miles or less per ride, then an electric bike is perfect for you. And for you touring folk who ride three or 3,000 miles a year, your miles are built into the average that I just said of, of two to 6,000 miles. I say again, average miles rode by a rider in a year. So don't, just don't. We get it, you're amazing and you have an iron ass, whatever. Last but not least, number four, cost to operate. I've already done a video about this and you can watch that video to see how I calculated the math, but bottom line is that it has cost approximately $111 of fuel, which is electricity, to ride the 10,000 miles of leverage. I'll let you do the math compared to a 50 MPG gas motorcycle, on which is more expensive. It's the gas bike. 
You can also make your own judgment on whether this operation cost makes having an electric bike worth it. I'll just say it, once you go electric, you don't want to go back.